All right. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, this is Sean here at Zycel. I am the product manager for wireless products and our Nebula cloud and some other stuff. Today, we're going to be talking about Nebula. This is our once a month sort of introduction to Nebula, where we go over some of the basics about Nebula, what it is, why you might be interested in it, some of the quirks when it comes to features and licensing, et cetera. Um, so we'll try to go through. Um, as we do, if you have any questions, send them in using the question and answer part of the Zoom interface. Um, so just click on that, type up your questions, and depending on the question, I'll answer um, live or I may save it towards the end, depending on what that question is or what slide we are on. Um, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. So Nebula was the first full stack cloud networking solution for SMB. So what does that name? So cloud networking has to do with cloud management. So instead of having to directly go into your hardware to manage it, set up VPN or port forwards to get access to it, you simply go to a web page to see and manage your products. So we were not the first to invent this. Um, probably the biggest name in this space was Cisco Meraki, who was targeting the enterprise space. Um, and there may have been some SMB solutions out there specifically aimed just at wireless products, but nothing that was full stack. Full stack being switches, access points, security gateways, basically the three core components of a typical SMB network. So we launched this all the way back in 2016. This is not something new. It's been out there for what, seven plus years now? Um, so we've been constantly improving it. Obviously we haven't been sitting on our laurels. Um, but we've been improving it all of that time. So it just keeps getting better and better over time. So this is what goes into setting up your typical network, buying equipment, setting up remote access, log servers, things like that. So the idea behind Nebula is to either eliminate some aspects of setting up a new network or those aspects we can't eliminate, streamlining them, making them simpler, quicker. So you're spending less money and spending less time anytime you set up a new network. So we'll talk about some of the features of Nebula here going forward. So to begin with, you can be up and running in minutes. We've got a number of basic wizards that you go through that'll help you set up a new customer, a new site. Um, so it doesn't take that long to set something up with some basic settings. Obviously, you know, depending on how complex the network is with VLANs and policy rules on your firewalls and stuff, you may be spending more time than that. But just to get something where you've got a switch up and running, an access point up and running, and clients able to reach out to the network, just a few minutes. So you can start doing your configuration before you even unbox your hardware. To begin with, at any point, you can go to nebula.zycel.com, log in, create your customer, create one or more sites for that customer, and some of the basic settings can be configured in advance. Once you have ordered your hardware, um, you simply scan the QR code on the outside of the box, assign that hardware to your customer, and you can start doing all full configuration of that device. You don't need to take the device out of the box in most cases. So you scan it, start configuring it, and ship it onto the customer site. Once it gets to the customer site, you just plug it in and it's ready to go. Now, there are a couple of exceptions to that. Some of our security products, for security reasons, don't let you do the QR code scan or they hide the QR code only on the belly label of the product, not on the outside of the box. Um, and our GS1350 series switches, you have to manually put them into Nebula mode. But otherwise, everything else, just scan the QR code on the outside of that box. So in order to use Nebula, what do you need? You need Nebula compatible hardware, and that's it. So there is no extra hardware you need to buy. There's no cloud keys. There's no CNA devices. There is no virtual machines that need to be set up, no servers anywhere. Everything you need to use Nebula is built into our hardware itself. It will Our hardware will automatically reach out to the network. It will see if you want to manage it in the cloud, and if you do, it will put itself into cloud mode for you. So from that point forward, you have access to all of your customers, all of their networks, anywhere you have access to a web browser and an internet connection. There is no reason or need to go on site for configuration purposes.
So we'll talk about some of the features that are built into Nebula. So specifically for our access points, our access points have captive portal built in on the access point itself. So even if you don't have a gateway that supports captive portal, it is built in on our AP hardware standalone by itself. Um, and so it gives you a lot of flexibility with how you set up that guest Wi-Fi network. So this could be whether you're doing something like a small public hotspot, or you're simply providing guest access at a retail location or to visitors to an office building. A lot of flexibility here. Um, we have the ability to do terms of service page. So they have to agree to a terms of service before they get access. You can have them log in with a username and password. You can have them register and create their own username and password and save an email address. Um, you can use Facebook for login. So a lot of flexibility with how the login goes. That captive portal page itself is customizable. Um, you can edit it and uh, we hosted it in our cloud. If you need more advanced things, you need to add some maybe features or tie-ins to your own local server, that can be done as well. You can download our HTML and CSS files, um, edit them however you want and upload them to your server if you need some extra functionality. And that all of our wireless products support smart meshing. They support WPA2 and WPA3 security. Uh, for WPA2 and WPA3 enterprise security, you do need something that's 100 series or higher. So our business class access points. Um, we do sell some access points that are 50 and 90 series that are more prosumer based. So do not have that uh, WPA3 enterprise security built in on them, but everything 100 and up, which is 90% of our products does. And we support industry standards like 802.11 KV and R. So on our switches, most of our switches support these standard features here. So intelligent PoE, the ability for us to monitor the connected PoE device and determine how much power it really needs rather than just going by what it says it needs, which it oftentimes can free up considerable amount of PoE budget. So you can power up more devices on the same switch without needing to upgrade to a switch with a bigger PoE budget. We have network protection functionality built in, ACL, VLAN configurations, 802.1x authentication, loop guard, DHCP guard, et cetera, and virtual switch stackings built in. So all updates are done over the air, whether that's a configuration change or a firmware update, meaning that you do not access the device directly. Simply log into Nebula, make the changes you need to make, and they will be pushed out automatically for you. On the security side of things, we have easy VPN, uh, making it easy for you to uh, VPN different offices together. You simply go into the Nebula interface, choose the locations you want to connect together, choose the topology you want, and we'll handle everything else for you. So Nebula was built from the ground up with the idea that you've got a lot of customers, each of those customers may have multiple sites. So we've specifically designed Nebula with that in mind to make it really easy for you to switch sites or jump from customer to customer. Really easy to do. Um, it's not like some of the other SMB cloud solutions where you have to have, create different logins um, and basically set up each of your customers as their own independent company or instance in the cloud. We do not do that for you. So this is just showing here, once you select your customer, um, it gives you a list of all of their sites and gives you a little snapshot of what's going on on that customer's site. So you can see here, you can see how many clients are online, data usage, any devices that are offline, et cetera. So it gives you a quick view, then you can uh, delve in deeper into the specific site that you may want to configure or check out. So when you're looking at one of your customer's sites, this is the default dashboard view that you're going to see here. Now, which modules are available is going to depend on which Zycell equipment you've got installed. Is it just access points? Is it access points and switches? Do you have the gateways, et cetera? So depending on what you have, gives you the option of which, um, which little widgets here you can see, and you can customize which widgets you have on there. So you can choose what you need for yourself. But as you can see here, it shows you how many devices are online. It can show you how many wireless and wired users you have, which access points are getting the most usage, um, things like which applications are using your bandwidth, not just users or devices, but individual applications that are using your bandwidth, et cetera. 
If you want to switch customers really easy, you've got a drop down list that shows you all of your customers. And then once you've selected a customer, there's a drop down that shows you all of the sites that are available for that customer. Choose that and it'll jump you over to that. And then all your configuration and monitoring is done on the menus here on the left hand side of the page. So here's our default client view where you can see the clients that are connected to the network. As you can see, we give you some very basic troubleshooting information, the MAC address of the client device, their IP address, when they were last seen online, the manufacturer of their NIC card, et cetera. Now this current view where you're seeing here is a mixed view showing all clients on the network. And as you can see, we indicate whether they are plugged in through ethernet or connected to wireless and whether or not they are currently connected or not. And we can change that view and you'll get access to more options here, depending on whether we're looking just at Wi-Fi clients versus wired clients. So for instance, if you're looking at Wi-Fi clients, you may want to know which radio they're connected to, which SSID they're connected to, their current signal strength. All of that can be shown here and exported. And then on the switch side of things, we've got the ability here to quickly see what's going on on your switch ports, which ports have a device plugged in, color coded based on the speed of that connection, and also showing whether or not that port is using PoE or not. And then you can configure multiple uh, switch ports at the same time. Simply select your switch ports and it pulls up this configuration view. So you can quickly apply multiple settings to multiple ports really simply. So what I've been talking about for the most part up to this point is free. So Nebula is free, it's still free. That's a big thing that sets us apart from a lot of our competition out there. There are no limits to the number of customers you can manage with the free version of Nebula, no limitation to the number of sites you can manage with the free version of Nebula. And it gets you access to all of the core basic features that you would expect to find on some of these devices. Now, we do have some optional licenses that unlock some additional stuff, and we will go through that um, in a few slides here, but we're not there quite yet. So when you're looking for Nebula, when we first launched this all the way back in 2016, we sort of copied the Meraki route where um, there was certain hardware that could be cloud managed, and there was certain hardware that could only be locally managed, and you had to choose ahead of time which you wanted for your customer. So we have gotten away from that now. Just about everything we sell is what is called Nebula Flex. So Nebula Flex means it's hardware that can either be used in the traditional standalone way or can be managed in the cloud. So this lets you standardize on specific SKUs for your customers, whether you're going to be cloud managing them or not. And it's really super easy to switch between cloud and standalone modes. So by default, your device is in standalone mode. If you want to put it into the cloud, you would scan that QR code or manually enter the Mac and serial number of the device and add it to one of your customer's networks. Once you do that, within a few minutes, the device will know that you now want to cloud manage it, and it will automatically reboot the device in cloud mode. If at some point you, for whatever reason, you want to take it out of the cloud and make it a standalone product again, you can do that. You simply go into the cloud, remove it from your inventory, and it'll automatically reboot in standalone mode. Now, a key thing here is configurations are independent between these two modes. So when you're in cloud mode, it downloads its configuration from the cloud. When you put it back into standalone mode, it factory resets itself and goes back to a default configuration that you will need to manually configure. So the settings don't get ported back and forth between the two modes. So when it comes to our products, we've got lots and lots of products these days that work in the Nebula cloud. This top row up here are what are, are called our Nebula Flex devices. So again, dual mode, standalone or cloud. Down here on the bottom row, these are what we call Nebula Flex Pro. And the primary difference for most of these products is the Pro indicates that one year of our Pro Pack, which is one of the optional licenses I will talk about here soon, comes bundled with that hardware out of the box. And in the case of our access points, if you're looking to use a local area controller, you do need to buy a Nebula Flex Pro AP. So even though you aren't using the cloud, you do need to buy Nebula Flex Pro, not Nebula Flex, to use it with the controller that's built in on a lot of our security appliances. So just something to keep in mind there. 
And when it comes to our security products, um, whether it comes with Pro or not really depends on the SKU you buy. Most of our security SKUs are sold in two forms, a standalone basic, just the hardware SKU, and a SKU that comes bundled with UTM services. So in general, if you're buying a standalone SKU, you end up with just Nebula Flex. If you're buying something that comes bundled with the security licenses, that normally also includes one year of Pro Pack with it. And then our LTE 4G outdoor router that also supports uh, Nebula Flex Pro. So now let's talk about licensing. So this is where things get a little confusing for people at times. So we'll go through it. There are three levels to Nebula. There is the base pack, which is the free version that everything supports. And then there are the optional plus and pro packs. So we don't sell a lot of the plus pack. Um, the plus pack is similar to some of the cloud offerings by some of our other uh, generally more consumer oriented brands. We'll, we'll put it that way. Um, and then pro pack is our, our full featured MSP type license, which is what we sell the most of. Um, it is still very affordable. Pro Pack is roughly going to cost you around $30 per device per year to use it. Now, to upgrade your network from the free version of Nebula to either Plus or Pro Pack, is every device in a specific organization needs to have a have a valid license to put that organization into Plus or Pro Pack mode. So what is an organization? An organization is just Zycel terminology for your customer. So you, in Nebula, you have organizations. Each of those would be considered your customer. And then under the organization, you may have one or more sites. So if you're upgrading and want to upgrade to Plus or Pro, every device in the org you want to upgrade needs to have a valid license. Um, you cannot just do it on certain devices. Every device needs to be on there. If you have a customer that for some reason one site needs a pro pack and their other sites do not, then you would split them into two orgs, a pro pack org and a non pro pack org. So I hope that's clear. Some of the features you get with pro pack and sometimes plus pack um, is machine learning for wireless. We have a Wi Fi help and a Wi Fi aid sections that are available only with ProPack, which use machine learning to help monitor your network, highlight any issues that might be going on, and allow you also to basically enable automatic wi wireless configuration changes where we can automatically make some tweaks to your wireless network for you to try to solve some of those issues we may be seeing. Um, with that machine learning. So that is something that is an option for you with the Pro Pack. On our Layer 2 Plus switches, we have a special IPTV mode. So the IPTV TV mode unlocks some additional IGMP settings that aren't normally available in the free version of Nebula. And it allows us also to monitor your IPTV streams and generate a report letting you know which customers and which channels may have had some issues and also give you suggestions as to what settings to change to make that a little bit smoother. We also give you a topology view. So we'll automatically map out what's plugged into what. So it's a, it's a nice tool to have when you're troubleshooting issues and you don't remember which access point is plugged into which switch and which switch is upstream of that switch, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a nice little tool to have for troubleshooting. So we also have one other type of license called the MSP pack license. So the MSP pack has nothing to do with Plus or Pro. You can use an MSP license on any type of organization, free or not, free or paid. Um, it is instead a license for an admin account. So what the MSP license does is it unlocks additional features for that admin user. So any org that that admin user has access to, um, it gives you it unlocks additional features for that user. So generally, if you're an MSP, you would probably have a couple users, maybe three users that would have the MSP license, but it wouldn't be something you would buy for all of your admins. It would just be for the top level guys. 
and basically what it is is it's it's basically an MSP as the name says sort of management package here. So it lets you, for instance, replace our branding with your branding in the Nebula interface. Replace our um, support contact information with your support contact information. So that way you can have your end users, their admin guy, whatever, give them access to Nebula. But um, if they have questions or need help, they're getting hit with your branding on that. It allows you to get email alerts on all versions of all your customers, even those that are using the free version of Nebula, which generally doesn't get the email and push alerts. It allows you to set up admin teams. So make it easier if you've got a large team of admins that may need access to stuff, it makes it a lot easier for you to assign and remove and add people from different organizations because you can put them in a team and then assign the teams to your sites or your customers. It also unlocks some additional cloning features, the ability to clone existing customers, use templates to push out configuration changes across all of your customers, et cetera. So that is something that's available here. Now, a key thing here with both the MSP license um, and the Plus and Pro Pack license, all of these have a, I believe, 30-day trial in the Nebula interface. So at any point, if you say, hey, maybe I need that MSP license, but you don't have to just go out and buy it or buy a month and, and play with it to see if you want it. We have free demos of all of these. So you can play around with it and see what these features are and see if it's something that's worthwhile for you to upgrade to or not. Um, so now we'll get to the really boring part, but the part we get lots of questions on, which is what is the difference between free plus and pro? So all three versions are getting you access to the same basic single pane of glass to manage all your stuff. They give you access to the Google Maps integration and the ability to import floor plans and position individual devices on those floor plans to help you out down the road, allow you to take photos of, the, of where you've installed the hardware and store that in the cloud with the device to make it easier for your techs to find it. All of them have that zero touch deployment where you just simply plug them in and they do everything else on their own without needing to configure them or point them anywhere. All of them give you firmware updates through the cloud and basic firmware scheduling and all give you access to the, um, the mobile apps that we have for Nebula. Now, where we first start seeing some differences here is on the logging information. So the free version of Nebula only keeps 24 hours worth of logs stored in the cloud. Plus Pack gives you a week and Pro Pack gives you a year. Now, we do support standard six syslog server export. So if you need more than 24 hours of logs and you don't want to sign up for Plus or Pro Pack, you can always have the logs automatically exported to your own syslog server and you can store them as long as you want. Another area where there are some differences here comes to how many admin accounts you can have per organization. So again, an organization is essentially your customer. So you will have, hopefully for being successful, you'll have lots of different organizations. So each one of them with a free version of Nebula can have up to five admin accounts. Plus Pack gives you eight admin accounts. And then Pro Pack is an unlimited number of admin accounts per organization. We also have a cloud database that we use for authentication servers. So this has 50 entries in the free version of Nebula, 100 entries in Plus Pack, and an unlimited number of entries in Pro Pack. So again, this is our own cloud hosted authentication server. For most features, if you don't want to use this, you can use your own and set up your own Radius server to do the same functionality. So you would be using this for 8021X authentication, um, things like that. So it's up to you if you want to use our cloud hosted thing. Those are what the limits are. Otherwise, use your own Radius server. The only exception to that currently is um, dynamic pre-shared key. If you're using DPPSK, you do need ProPack um, in order to, I believe, to use that. And you must use our cloud at the moment. Although I think a feature release is coming later this year that will let that work with um, your own Radius server as well. Um, so all your core, you know, SSID settings, firewall rules, switch rules, things like that are all part of the all versions of Nebula. Mac filtering, 802.1x authentication, available in all versions of Nebula. Captive portal, available in all versions of Nebula. So now where we start getting to some features that are exclusive just to Plus and to ProPack is advanced firmware scheduling. So this lets you set up 
very granular schedules for your firmware updates. So you can set different schedules for for hardware based on what type of hardware it is, switches one day, you know, APs at a different day and time, or it can even set up schedules for individual pieces of hardware separate from what's being done by the rest of the group. Plus and Pro give you access to our automatic reporting functionality. So we've got a number of different reports you can put in there. You can have them automatically generated every week or every month and emailed to whoever you think needs to see them. We have partners using this to send updates to their customers to show their customers that they're actively managing their network. So you can also add your own logo to that email that we generate, again, just to help you with rebranding and you know getting your name in front of your customer's face. That automatic topology view, as I showed you earlier, that's a plus and or pro pack feature. Email alerts require plus or pro pack. And the use of Wi-Fi vouchers requires plus or pro pack, which almost nobody uses. Um, it's just one more option for doing captive portal uh, where you can generate vouchers for certain periods of time to hand out to people. And then all the rest of these features here are going to require pro pack. So we have a user audit change log. So we keep a year's worth of change logs in the cloud for you. So again, it's just to help you when it comes to troubleshooting your customers' networks. You can see when something was changed. You know, if something just goes wrong on, you know, Friday, you can check was anything configured Thursday night that may have broke something on Friday, or you can check certain settings to see which user made those settings. So you can ask them, you know, what, what they were doing, why they did what they did. Access to configuration sync, clone and template features. That is in an organization, so it allows you to clone and sync information between different sites, where MSP, the MSP license, gives you that functionality, but at a uh, overall level, to, so it can do sort of cross-org um, cloning and syncing. The ability to back up and restore certain configuration settings. The ability to open a ticket directly with our headquarters for Nebula support. Advanced AAA features. Um, we talked about before some of that uh, Wi-Fi health monitoring, the machine learning, advanced IGMP settings, um, vendor-based VLANs on the switches, um, static routing that requires a pro pack. If you're using our 1350 series of switches, those advanced um, features that they have, those require pro pack when managing them in the cloud. And the ability to do remote packet captures directly off one of our security appliances is something that requires ProPack. I'm going to skip that. So that's in the wrong order. So that's it as far as the, you know, the true Nebula licenses that are available and the differences in the features. And again, if you have questions, use that question and answer interface, type them up and I'll be happy to answer them for you. That's generally an area where we get a lot of questions. So um, go ahead and get those queued up for me. We're getting close to the end, folks. Um, another type of license we have, it's actually not a Nebula license, but I did want to talk about it, is called Connect and Protect. So Connect and Protect is a type of security license just for access points. Basically, it uses an IP reputation filter to help block bad sites on the internet for your wireless users and your wireless users only. And it's available in two flavors, Connect and Protect and Connect and Protect Plus. The Plus just adds also the ability to do application throttling um, based on, uh, I want to say it's based on user, per user bandwidth throttling. So. It's there, and I wanted to talk about it because it's a little bit different. You know, generally when we talk about our security licenses, we're talking about licenses that are found, you know, on your security gateway. But if you don't have a security gateway and your customer doesn't want to buy one, maybe, you know, they've got a router provided by their ISP and they don't want to mess with it, you know, this is a way of providing the sort of UTM services to your wireless users. We see a lot of people using this for public hotspots to provide that little extra level of uh, security on that guest network. And this is something that's done on a per AP basis. Again, it, it doesn't even have to require Nebula. You can do it in standalone mode as well. Um, but it's the ability so you can just deploy it on whichever APs you want to provide that extra level of security on. 
So one of the areas where we get questions on it, well, well, how does Nebula work? Why should we trust you? I mean, Sean, you've only been doing this for seven plus years without any major outages. How can we trust you? So I want to talk about how Nebula itself works. We also get questions along these lines when it comes to, you know, can I use this with PCI? Is this going to be a problem with HIPAA, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is what we, so this is why I want to sort of talk about this. So to begin with, the Nebula cloud is run by us on Amazon AWS. So everything is hosted on Amazon AWS and it is a very distributed network. So we've got nodes set up all over the world. And because this is an international solution, there are lots of different laws that go into effect here. Probably the most common one that we get asked about is GDRP, which is a privacy rule in the EU. So yes, we comply with that. We do comply with PCI and HIPAA or can be part of a PCI and HIPAA solution that you might offer. Um, but you know, when it comes to Europe and some of these other countries, sometimes they have different rules as to where data needs to be stored, where the servers need to be. So we take that into account. When you tell us, basically when you install new hardware, we try to geolocate it, or you can tell us where you've put it and we will automatically configure it to use the parts of the cloud that not only are closest to it for best performance, but also comply with whatever the local laws are in that area. So for instance, if you take one of our US access points, move it to Europe, the 2.4 radio will automatically switch over to using 13 channels instead of the 11 channels that are available in the US. It will also automatically reduce the power output in Europe because Europe doesn't allow the same high levels of power that we have here in North America. But the idea with it being in AWS is AWS is probably one of the most reliable cloud-hosted architectures out there. I know they just had some um, issues just fairly recently, maybe, but three, four weeks ago. Um, and despite that, we got zero tickets coming in with people reaching out to me saying, Sean, why is Nebula down? So um, even though Amazon was having some issues, we kept everything up and running. If for some reason you do lose connection to the cloud, your hardware will continue to run with its current configuration indefinitely. It is not like certain other cloud hardware, which after a day or two just sort of gives up and says, hey, I can't talk to the cloud. I'm shutting down until I get an internet access again. Now we will run indefinitely until the uh, network connection gets restored. We have the ability to essentially scale. So as you continue to add customers and devices, we will automatically scale to support that for you. We have a four nines uptime guarantee. Now, another question we get has to do with communication with the cloud. How is that handled? Have we created something in-house that's super secret to allow this safe communication of traffic between our hardware and the cloud? Something some of our competitors do. And the answer to that is no. We use NetConf, N-E-T-C-O-N-F. That is a industry standard for providing secure management traffic to remote locations. So that is what we use. It is an industry standard. It has been around for years. It is not something we've cobbled together in, in house that you just have to trust us that it's safe. Now we are using uh, industry standards there. And another thing here when it comes to things like HIPAA and PCI is that your user's traffic does not touch our cloud. The only thing that touches our cloud is that admin traffic the log storage, configuration and firmware updates being pushed out, logs being stored in the cloud, and that's basically it. So if your customer's land traffic, it stays on their land. If the customer has traffic that needs to go out to the internet, it goes directly out to the internet. It is not forced through our cloud at any point. So basically, purely a management function doesn't affect customer data. So just to summarize here, the benefits of using Nebula, it's easy to set up, it's easy to start using, you can do it at any point. It should save you time, it should save you effort, it should make your life a lot easier for you, it should make support easier, troubleshooting easier, and it's just easy to do. So we do have a live demo out there. So at any point, you can go to nebula.zicel.com and there is a button on the login page um, it'll take you to a live demo. So if you want to play around a bit with that live demo, you can do that. If you are one of our Zycel partners, you can reach out to your salesperson and see about getting a 60-day demo kit if you want to play with it. Um, or if you're already selling Zycel equipment, chances are you have Nebula-compatible hardware that you can play with at any point on your own as well. 
Then just lastly, webinars like today's are usually recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel. So um, in a day or two, you will be able to find this at Zycel America channel on YouTube. That YouTube channel, in addition to that, has other videos that are put together, some best practices videos, product launch videos, um, video case studies, success stories, things like that. So it's worth checking out. And then, of course, you can always connect to us on LinkedIn at Zycel US channel. And with that, guys, that is the end of today's webinar. I have no questions pending, but I'll stick around here for a few minutes in case you're busy typing something up for me. Um, but also, you can always reach out to me directly. It's Sean R. Sean is spelled S-H-A-W-N-R at Zycel.com. So you can reach out to me, or if you're one of our partners, reach out to your salesperson, Andy, David, Jacob. And they can probably answer the question, or if not, forward the question to me or our sales engineer to get the answer that you have. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions coming in, so I am going to go ahead and end today's webinar. Thank you for joining us today. We do webinars Tuesdays and Thursdays. I hope to see you at one of our future ones. Thank you.